Food. Question number three, <laughs> Reno Turakatnu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What reaction has he seen to the budget policy statement and half-year economic and fiscal update that were released last week? Oh, Mr Speaker, the I've seen some positive Robertson. reactions from the banking sector. The ANZ said, in our view, we are constructive about the prospects going forward. The overarching message from today's figure is that there is room to accommodate lifts in spending and operating plans right now. The ASB said the HIFU and the healthy fiscal forecast operating balance show that the government has remained committed to the budget responsibility rules. And the BNZ said any fuss about the HIFU might particularly non-plus international observers. It looks very good. It conforms to the promises made by the finance minister. What other reactions has he seen from economic commentators? Well, Mr Speaker, I've seen numerous positive comments from a variety of sources. PwC said the government is projecting significantly higher allowances for capital expenditure, with schools, housing and transport being the main winners. And Rod Orham says Treasury's forecasts and its half-year economic and fiscal update will be comforting to government and business alike. Supplementary. Has he heard reports of any other reactions, including shortness of breath, resulting from the release of the budget policy statement in half-year economic and fiscal update? Oh, Mr Speaker, surprisingly I have heard one from Barry Soper who said, quote, it's fair to say National was a bit like a fish just landed and gulping for air. Order. <laughs> point of order. A point of order, the Honourable Secretary. Uh, given the selective uh, uh, quoting of the comments from the banks, I seek leave uh, to table a document that says economists cast doubt over Treasury's order, optimistic order worker. The, the name of the document, who it's by and its date and whether it's publicly available. Uh, it is by Hamish Rutherford. It is dated the 12th of December and yes, it is publicly available. The member will resume his seat and stop trifling with the chair. <laughs> a point of order Stephen Joyce, the uh, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, in terms of trifling with the Chair, uh, we've just had a, a list of questions and answers in this House, uh, which you've previously ruled out as Ministers responding in terms of reactions uh, to their particular announcements that aren't actually reports. Um, so I understand and completely accept that perhaps I was bending the rules slightly in terms of my point of order, but it was literally in response the approach that was taken and allowed to be taken uh, during that question. Well, I just want to remind the, the member of uh, uh, a saying which I'm sure many of our grandmothers told us, and that's two wrongs don't make a right. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Well, I think, um, uh, Mr Speaker, your uh, rulings or advice to the House last week on what reports could be uh, requested of ministers uh, by way of questions from the opposition, uh, either primary or supplementary, uh, and your uh, concern that uh, some of the questions being asked by another party uh, who are part of government to one of their ministers also requiring uh, a comment on a report uh, were, were not to progress. So I'd ask you simply to have a look at what you were ruling last week and then consider the exchange that's just taken place for Mr Robertson and see whether or not there is uh, uh, a little bit of uh, leniency being applied to Mr Robertson that wasn't applied last week. I'm, I'm, I am happy to look at that. I, uh, I will say that I have been listening pretty carefully. That I think the questions which were ruled out uh, were people seeing reports for things before they had responsibility as opposed to around things which they have presented to this House. But I'm, I will check that. Uh, question... Number four, the Honourable Dr Jonathan mm. Cohen. To the Minister of Health. What